Now, the saints of yesteryear remember when they got saved. They could tell you where they were, they could tell you what happened. And some of them could remember that the first, the first time they ever went to the house of the Lord, that they knew something on the inside was not what it should have been. But they remember how something got a hold of them. Huh? And that's that old song, something got a hold of me. I went to the church one night, my heart was right. your family, your friends, your brother, and your sister to go check out our website, fmbcnl.org, fmbcnl.org. <laughs>
Good morning, fellowship. Good morning, fellowship. Good morning. Our scripture for this morning comes from Psalms 113, 1 through 3. Psalms 113, verses 1 through 3. And this is what it reads. Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, before we come asking you for anything, we just stop by to thank you. Thank you, Father, for this day that you've given to us. And Lord, we pray that we give it back to you. You've been mighty good to us. You've been mighty kind to us. Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. You've been better to us than we've been to you. And Lord, we come to say thank you. Lord, before we go any farther, we just want to acknowledge our many sins before you. Some things you told us to do, we left undone. Some things you told us not to do, we've done and gotten pleasure out of it. But Lord, you said if we confess our sins, that thou would be faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us of all our unrighteousness. And Lord, we come to thank you, Lord. Lord, you're a faithful God, and you're faithful to your people. Lord, we just pray that you just stop by for a little while, Lord, and fill us with your praise. Lord, rain down on us, Father. And whatever we do today, that it be acceptable in your eyesight, oh God. Lord, we come thanking you for your greatest gift of all, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on that old recovery called cross, Lord. Lord, he died, Father, for our sins and the sins of this cruel and cruel and fatal world, Lord. Lord, we had, know he had the power to come from off the cross, but he stayed there, Lord. Lord, kept him on the cross, Father. And we thank you, Father, for his demonstration of love that you showed us, Lord. Oh, Lord, you've been so good and you've been so kind. You've been tender in mercy towards your people. Now, Lord, we come, Father, for our week having been that great, Lord. But we are here, Father, because you woke us up early this morning. You gave us a portion of health and strength. You clothed us in our right minds, Lord. And you gave us the movement of our ligaments. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we come to pray and lift up the church this morning, oh God. Bless your people, oh Lord, as we call upon your holy and your righteous name, Lord. Lord, we need you, and we can't make it without you, Lord. We see this old world, Father, is doing whatever they want to do, Father. But I come to stop by, Father, to let everybody know that you're still in charge this morning. You're still sitting on your throne. You're still taking care of your people. You're still God, and besides you, there's no one else. There's no one like you. There's no one equal to you. There's no one more than you, Father. You're God, and you're God all by yourself. You're still ruling. You're still super rule. You have all power and authority in your hand. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. And we're going to take this time out right now to bless your holy and your righteous name. You're worthy, Lord, to be praised. And you're worthy right now, Father. We just come by to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness, kindness, 
in your mercy. Although we can't see you working, Lord, we know you're doing great things for your people. You're working, Father, in our mountain highs, and you're working, Lord, in our valley lows. You're working for your people, bringing all things together for our good. So we're never going to stop blessing you. We're never going to stop praising you. We're never going to stop giving you all the glory and honor that you deserve, Father. You deserve it all, Father. It's all about you, and it's nothing about us, Father. Oh, bless your holy and your righteous name. Continue to rule and super rule because we have all power in your hand. You're still working it out for us each and every day. Help us, Father, to stay firm in your word, Father. Teach us, Father. Bless us, Father. Show us how to respond to your word, Father. We thank you one more time, Father. Bless your holy and your righteous name, Lord. These and all blessings we pray in your powerful, in your mighty, in your holy, in your loving name of your darling son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank God.
All of the Lord's people just said, Hosanna. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have a right reason and a responsibility. 
to rejoice and to be made glad in it. You do know this is Palm Sunday, right? And on Palm Sunday, as Christ entered into the city of Jerusalem, the Bible says that the crowds cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So I'm gonna try that one more time. Let all of the people of God shout, Hosanna in the highest on today. How we bless God for this opportunity to be found in this unique space, in this, ple this special place called sanctuary. Anybody glad to be alive today? Come on now, if you couldn't clap for that, the Lord knows how to change that real quickly. Amen. It's good to be in the land of the living. It's good to be in the sanctuary and not in the cemetery, in God's house and not in the crazy house. Would you help me one more time? Let's show love to all of our young people, to our sunbeamers. Come on, church. That's it. Let's show them some love to all of our sunbeamers. I said, let's show them some love. Clap for them like they're your own child, like they're your grandchild. And to this praise team, you all sound wonderful. Wonderful. You all sound wonderful, wonderful on this morning. Uh, and we praise God for that. You know, I, I was once, wait, where well, y'all were, you know that, right? Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. If we won't celebrate them, there's a world waiting. I want to say that again. I said if we won't celebrate them, there's a world waiting for them. And so we pray, we bless God for them and we pray uh, that God would continue to keep them uh, and to move forward. It's preaching time this morning uh, and uh, we are grateful today that the Lord has sent a preacher uh, this way. It is not, this is not his first time sharing with us and so uh, I don't need to introduce him to you. Uh, all I need to do is present uh, him to you. He comes to us uh, as the pastor of the Zion Traveler uh, Baptist Church of Ruston, Louisiana. If ever you are in north central Louisiana uh, and you're there on a weekend, I want to tell you, stop by the Zion Traveler Church. Uh, they have church in Ruston, Louisiana. And since the last time uh, this preacher has been with us, the Lord has seen fit to elevate him. Uh, he is now the moderator uh, of Gum Springs, uh, uh, amen, Gum Springs Missionary Baptist Association, which is, I believe, the largest association in North Central Louisiana with over 60 some odd churches uh, that the Lord has blessed him to provide. Uh, oh, amen. We can, amen. We can thank God uh, for that uh, on today. Uh, and he is my, uh, my brother in Christ. He is my brother in life. And he is my brother in ice. Uh, and he's in town this weekend uh, for a fraternity convention, uh, and uh, and he's he's working today's preaching here, and then he'll leave here and go to the New Hope Church uh, and share with Pastor uh, Jamal Weathersby. So, church family, uh, we are blessed today uh, to receive the preaching ministry of one of my best friends, uh, the Reverend Maurice White. Uh, who is the pastor of the Zion Traveler Church of Ruston, Louisiana. When you know what the preacher's talking about, there's a word that belongs in our church, and that word is amen. Would you receive him now by saying amen? Come on, put your hands together and praise the Lord on today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I am thankful for this another opportunity uh, to be in the city of New Orleans, uh, to be at the Fellowship Church, uh, to share the good news, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. And then I'm thankful for, I'm thankful uh, for uh, mentor, uh, pastor, leader, and the person of Dr. Moses Gordon. Come on, let's praise him and uh, thank the Lord for him on today. I love him so dearly, 
and he's been such a blessing to my life and I met him uh, when I was a student at Dillon University amen he gave me the opportunity to uh, use my gifts and to show me how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ then I'm thankful for my brother in Christ my brother in life my brother in ice amen amen pastor Moses Gordon amen come on let's thank the Lord for him on today also amen and good to see his lovely wife Morgan and children and good to see sister Gordon y'all sister Gordon she would uh, let me eat food out of her refrigerator when I was in seminary amen amen she's make them sandwiches and me and Moses would eat those sandwiches when we were over at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary then just one more person who means so so much to me who who taught me how to be a man a man and not just a man but an alpha man uh, the eighth jewel Dean Bird amen thankful to see him on today will you help me as we prepare for the word of God on this morning guide me oh thou great Jehovah pilgrims through this barren land guide me oh thou chapter 26 Matthew chapter 26 I want to read in your hearing verses 40 and 41 on this morning when you arrive there won't you just signify it by saying amen the Bible says 
And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want to place emphasis on verse number 40 where it says, and he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? With the Lord's help and with your prayers on this morning, brothers and sisters, I want to preach from the thought and subject, can Jesus count on you? Can Jesus count on you. When we peruse the pages of Scripture, especially the Synoptic Gospels, it becomes very clear that the disciples could always count on Jesus in the midst of a storm. They could count on Jesus while in the storm, whether Jesus was inside of the boat with them, and even when he was outside of the boat, they could still count on Jesus. They're recorded there in Mark chapter 4, those concluding verses of that chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Jesus and his disciples, they entered into the boat. They entered into the ship. And Jesus goes to sleep in the hinder part of the ship. And while Jesus is asleep in the hinder part of the ship, a storm arises on the sea. The wind is blowing and the waves are crashing the ship and the disciples feel as if they are going to lose their lives in the storm. Anybody ever been in that spot or place in your life? The wind was blowing and the waves of adversity were crashing upon your life and you felt like you were going to lose your life. I came to tell you on this morning, brothers and sisters, uh, that when you find yourselves in the midst of life storms, uh, it's good to have Jesus in the boat with you. Because as long as Jesus is in the boat, uh, you can count on Jesus. The Bible says they cried out, Master, carest not for us. And Jesus awakens from his sleep, steps to the front of the ship and says, Peace be still to the winds and the waves. He said to them in so many words, shut, shut up and sit down somewhere. It's good to know on this morning, brothers and sisters, that our God controls the storms of life. And I came to tell you on this morning, brothers and sisters, not only is he able to give peace to the storms that are on the outside of us, but I believe there are some witnesses in this place who will testify that Jesus is able to give peace to the storm that rages on the inside. They could count on Jesus when he was in the boat with them, but I want to make the argument on this morning that they could also count on Jesus when he was not in the boat with them. Because outside of the Synoptic Gospels, in the Gospel of John, John records where after the miracle, the feeding of the multitude, Jesus, after breaking the two uh, fish and five barley loaves and uh, blessing the multitude, he goes up into the mountains to pray. But before he goes up into the mountain to pray, he sends the disciples back to the other side in the ship. Uh, this time, uh, after going some three to four miles they found themselves in the middle of the sea and here comes another storm but this time Jesus is not in the boat with them but if my grandmother were here on this morning she would say he might not come when you want him to come but when he shows up he's always on time 
Do I have some people who will testify that Jesus will come to you in the midst of the storm? The interesting thing is that when he came to them, he did not come to them in another ship. Jesus did not come to them on a surfboard. Jesus didn't even come to them swimming, but he defies the laws of density and gravity, and he walks on the water. And when they first saw him, they thought that he was a ghost. But I came to tell you, there's nothing spooky or scary when Jesus shows up. For he says to them, be not afraid. It is I. Somebody ought to thank God for who he is. Somebody ought to thank God that he is the great I am. And the great I am, he shows up to give us peace and to deliver us, to take us to our divine destiny, even in the midst of the storm. I just came to tell somebody on this morning, you can count on Jesus. But the question I want to ask us on this morning is, Jesus, can he count on us when he finds himself going through a storm? It is in our text on this morning, here in Matthew chapter 26, we find Jesus going through a storm. The setting of our text is none other than the Garden of Gethsemane, this garden that was an olive press, this garden where the olives were pressed and crushed. Here Jesus comes with his disciples. Here Jesus takes with him into the garden Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says he goes a little further. He falls down on his face and he prays, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. And then uh, Matthew helps us to see through the words of Jesus that Jesus was exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Jesus is gripped by Grief. Jesus is troubled. The Greek word terasso suggests that he is agitated. He's irritated. There is a storm going on on the inside of Jesus as he realizes that on the next day he must drink from the bitter cup filled with suffering and death. <laughs> There is immediate tension in this text, brothers and sisters, because a little while earlier, Jesus told his disciples that he must go up to Jerusalem, that he would be crucified at the hands of sinful men. But he reminded them that would not be the end of the story, but he would rise from the dead three days later. He knows what the end is going to be. He knows that he's going to get up from the dead three days later, yet he's still agitated, irritated, and troubled because he must go to the cross to die for our sins. I said that to say to us on this morning that you can be assured of the victory and still have trouble with the assignment. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that you can still know that God is going to give you the victory, but you can still be irritated and agitated over the trouble and sorrow that you have to go through to get to the place of victory. I believe this shows us the perfect humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. That yes, Jesus was God and man at the same time. And because he was a human being, he had emotions. He had feelings. We see his righteous indignation when he whooped the money changers out of the temple. We often saw him sad when he had been teaching and his disciples couldn't get the lesson. We see him joyful when a light went off in their heads and they saw what he was really talking about. We see him weeping at the grave of Lazarus and now in the garden of Gethsemane he is troubled because he must go to the cross to die for our sins. 
And listen, listen to what he says to his disciples. He says, remain here, sit here, and watch with me and pray with me. Uh, but the sad thing in this text is that when Jesus goes and prays the first time, and he comes back and finds his disciples, his disciples are sleeping. And he raised the question, could you not just watch with me one hour? I believe, brothers and sisters, that's worth us looking at on this morning because the disciples in the garden are not the only followers of Jesus who have fallen asleep on the Lord. For when we look at the church today, uh, brothers and sisters, we too uh, have fallen asleep on Jesus. Uh, and it forces me to raise the question, can Jesus count on you and can Jesus count on me? In this uh, dead and depraved world in which we live, can Jesus uh, count on us, brothers and sisters, to share our faith, to share the good news of the gospel? Can Jesus count on you and me to engage in evangelism and outreach? Can Jesus count on you and me to speak up and to speak out against the social ills that plague our society today? Can Jesus count on you and count on me to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world can Jesus count on you this text suggests to us brothers and sisters that if Jesus is going to be able to count on us if the church is going to wake up if we're going to be active in being what God has called and saved us to be the first thing this text says to us on this morning is that we have to be watchful we have to be watchful. Jesus says in the text to his disciples, watch and pray so that you do not enter into temptation. He says, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He says, watch. He says, watch. The word watch, gregario in the Greek, it means to be ready. It means to be vigilant. It means to be alert. And when we look at the tense that it is, it's in the present tense. The Greek present tense is different from the English present tense because in English the present tense only deals with what's happening right now. But in the present tense it suggests the kind of action. It suggests that the action is habitual. The action is continual. The action is perpetual. Jesus says to us, uh, you ought to always be watching. Uh, you ought to always be praying. You ought to always be vigilant. Uh, that's a good word, brothers and sisters, for us uh, because this word, gregario, watch, uh, it is used in eschatology. The, the end times, the future times, uh, when God calls this world to a close. Uh, Jesus teaches us uh, uh, in the Gospels that we are to watch uh, because his return is inevitable. Uh, his return is indefinite. Uh, and his return is imminent. He says to us, brothers and sisters, that no man knows the day. No man knows the hour when he will return because he will return like a thief in the night. We've got to be always watching, always vigilant, and always alert. And is there anybody in fellowship on this morning who can praise God that this world is not all that God has to offer us. Is there anybody glad on this morning uh, that even though this world is dark and gloomy, there is a bright side somewhere? Uh, I just want to praise God and shout uh, on this morning because the same Jesus uh, that rode triumphantly into Jerusalem uh, on Palm Sunday, the same Jesus uh, who died on the cross, the same Jesus uh, who rose from the dead, the same Jesus uh, who went away, he's coming back one of these old days 
gregario, uh, to, to be watchful, to be, to be vigilant, to be alert. It's a word used in eschatology in the scriptures, but it is also a, a word that's used when speaking of one's enemies. Uh, we are to, to be watchful. We are to be vigilant. We are to be alert because we've got some enemies. I'm reminded of a history teacher who, who had uh, her, her students to research and study the, the rankings of all the past American presidents. And when the students started studying about those presidents, uh, uh, they, they discovered that uh, Abraham Lincoln was ranked number one. Abraham Lincoln was ranked number one because uh, he, he led our country through the Civil War, and he was the one who helped abolish slavery in our country. And uh, uh, the president that was ranked last was Buchanan because Buchanan was the antithesis to Abraham Lincoln. He caused our country to go into civil war because of his stance on supporting slavery. And just above Buchanan, well, y'all can guess who that was, huh? That orange fella. That, that fella who's running for president again, Donald Trump. And of course, near the top of the list was John F. Kennedy. And of course, near the top of the list was our favorite president as black folk, Barack Obama. But, but one of the things that shocked the Caucasian teacher was that George W. Bush was near the bottom of the list. She was puzzled. How could Bush, too, be so far at the bottom? Wouldn't he be closer to the middle with his father? But, but, but those of us in, in the sanctuary on this morning, like the black children who were in that class, know why he's so far at the bottom because of his response to Hurricane Katrina. He, he didn't respond and so many people lost their lives because of his response to Hurricane Katrina. And not only is he at the bottom because of Hurricane Katrina, but they still hadn't found those weapons of mass destruction in Iraq yet. And so many, so many American soldiers lost their lives on foreign soil, looking for weapons of mass destruction that did not exist. And we will never forget September 11, 2001, when those Muslim radicals in their jihad, in their religious war, flew those planes into the World Trade Center and in to the Pentagon, and uh, one plane crashed in the state of Pennsylvania. Thousands of people lost their lives because President Bush fell asleep on the job. He was not alert. He was not ready. He was not vigilant. Uh, I said that today, brothers and sisters, the Church of the Living God, uh, we cannot be like President George W. Bush. Uh, we cannot fall asleep on the job uh, because we too have an enemy. We too have an adversary. Peter says in 1 Peter 5 uh, that the devil, our adversary, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, in the first part of that verse, uh, he commands us to be sober, to be vigilant, to, to be watchful because the devil, brothers and sisters, he wants to take us out. Yeah. Paul, Paul reminds us why we need to be vigilant, why we need to be watchful in Ephesians 6 when he tells us, put on 
up the whole armor of God uh, that she may stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles, methodia, in the Greek from it, we get our English word method. He wants us to understand that we've got to be watchful, we've got to be vigilant uh, because the devil has uh, different methods. The devil uh, has different schemes. Uh, the devil is nobody to play with. He's cunning. Uh, he's crazy. After he's a calculated. Uh, so often while he is playing chess, uh, we're playing checkers. Can I get a witness in this place on this morning? David Jeremiah says that if we were to go into the devil's office and uh, check his filing cabinet, he has a file on each and every one of us. Uh, he knows what we like. He knows uh, our weaknesses and he is tricky. He is uh, a schemer. I want to suggest to us on this morning we got to watch because uh, he's a schemer, but then we've got to watch because he engages in spiritual warfare because Paul goes on to say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You too busy fighting people when you should be fighting the demons and the devils that's controlling those people. I came to tell you on this morning brothers and sisters that life is not a playground but life is a battlefield. Let me say that one more time. Life is not a playground. Life is a battlefield. Therefore you gotta put down your toys and pick up your weapons. You gotta understand you're not a civilian but you are a soldier in the Lord's army and do I have some folk in this house who will testify that you've been fighting for the Lord for a long time do I have some folk in fellowship who will testify I'm on the battlefield for the Lord and I promise the Lord I'm going to serve him until I die the devil is a schemer the devil engages in spiritual warfare but the devil is strong don't you be fooled. You can't just shake the devil off. But you've got to draw nigh unto God. You've got to submit yourself unto God. And the Bible says if you submit yourself unto God, he says resist the devil and he will flee for you. And I came to tell you, you got to put your, your armor on. You got to put your war clothes on. You got to put on the whole armor of God. Did anybody come out the house with your armor on this morning? Did you put on the helmet of salvation? Did you put on the breastplate of righteousness? Did you put on the belt of truth? Did you put on the shoes of the gospel? Did you pick up your weapon? Did you pick up the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith? I just came to tell you on this morning, fellowship, you can't depend on your own power, but you got to trust in the power of God. And can I get about 20 folk who will testify, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Because when you know that Jesus is the source of your strength, you can shout on this morning because the devil's power is limited, but God's power is limitless. You can shout on this morning because the devil's power is temporary, but God's power is eternal. You can shout shout on this morning because the devil's uh, power is meant for evil. Uh, but is there anybody who can shout because God's power is meant for good? That's why you ain't got to worry about Negroes and haters who come uh, because I'm with Joseph on this morning. Uh, you may have meant it for evil, uh, but God meant it uh, for my good. Uh, that's why I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. Uh, I'm going to watch, fight, and pray until I die. Can God count on you. Can God count on you? Can he count on me? First Jesus says if he's going to count on us, we got to watch. We got to be watchful. But then secondly, he says be prayerful. He says watch and pray so you do not enter into temptation for the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. He says you got to Pray. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Let me say that one more time. Watch and pray. 
trouble with so many of us brothers and sisters. We watch, but we don't pray. And we pray, and we don't watch. Ah, but Jesus teaches us in the text on this morning that we can do both simultaneously. We ought to be watching, and we ought to also be praying. Word pray used here is the Greek word pros eukamai. It is a compound word. The word pros is a preposition of direction. Ah, uh, it, it means toward or forward. It means uh, that what we pray should go in a certain direction. The word eukamai means to utter out loud, to speak out loud. Uh, ah. Jesus uh, commands us uh, ah, that when we find ourselves going through life's Gethsemane's, uh, that's the time to forward uh, and direct our prayers toward the true and the living God. The problem with so many of us is that we spend so much time talking to people and we spend very little time talking to God. We spend so much time posting on social media and very little time having a little talk with Jesus. Jesus says we got to watch and we've got to pray. The tense is once again the present tense, which means you ought to be praying always. Men should always pray and faint not pray without ceasing. Uh, you ought to pray in the morning. Uh, you ought to pray at noon. Day. You ought to pray in the evening. You ought to pray before you go to sleep. And when you find yourself up in the middle of night worrying, uh, you got to learn uh, how to pray. Uh, and I like this word, prosyukamai, because it's the idea of turning your back on something or someone else uh, and turning to God. Uh, maybe that's what Hezekiah was trying to teach us over there in Isaiah chapter 38 when Isaiah came and told Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're going to die. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, brothers and sisters, that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray to God. Notice uh, Hezekiah didn't start talking to his servants. Uh, Hezekiah didn't start talking uh, uh, to the priest. Hezekiah didn't start talking to people uh, in his uh, court uh, but Hezekiah turned his face to the wall uh, and started talking to the Lord. Uh, and is there anybody in fellowship on this morning who will testify that sometimes you got to turn your back to people, places, and practices uh, and just have uh, a little talk with Jesus? Is there anybody who will testify with me on this morning uh, that just a little talk with Jesus uh, will make everything all right. The Lord heard Hezekiah's prayer and before Isaiah could get out the palace, God said, go back and tell him, I've extended your life by 15. Is there anybody who will testify, God is a right now God. Uh, God will hear. God will uh, answer your prayer. I dare you to call on him. I dare you to tell him what you want on this morning. I need some prayer warriors who will testify that God's word is true. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and uh, ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be answered. Uh, I need somebody who will testify that God is still uh, in the business uh, of answering prayer. Jesus says pray. Pray. He says watch and pray so you do not enter into temptation. Uh, that, that word uh, temptation, parasmos there in, in the Greek is the idea of being tested. It's the idea of a trial. Uh, it's the idea of the fire being turned up. It's the idea of pressure being applied. Jesus uh, says to his disciples, you ought to be praying uh, because testing is on the way. Uh, you ought to be praying because uh, trials are on the way. You ought to be praying because temptation uh, is right up the road. They should have listened to Jesus and we should listen to Jesus also uh, because if Jesus uh, was tempted by the devil uh, then you can be rest assured we will be tempted by the devil also. 
Yes, he was tempted there in Matthew 4 and in Luke 4. He was tempted, but I'm so glad on this morning he did not give into the temptation. I'm so glad on this morning he did not sin. Is there anybody thankful for the perfect humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we needed a, a sinless sacrifice. We needed a, a sinless Savior. That's why I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Because what can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, they should have listened to Jesus because he had experienced temptation himself and he was was victorious and then they should have listened to Jesus because Jesus had already taught them how to pray you remember the model prayer he says and when you pray you ought to pray our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and what did he teach them and pray and lead us not into temptation. Instead of them sleeping, they should have been praying the model prayer. Instead of them uh, not being alert, they should have been watching and praying because the pressure was on the way. I came to tell you on this morning fellowship uh, that the pressure is on the way. The pressure is on the way. And that's the thing, something about pressure. Pressure has a way of, of showing you what's really on the inside. When we get up in the morning, we brush our teeth in order to get the, the toothpaste out of the tube. You don't cut it open. You, you don't beat the container uh, on the counter. But what do you do? You, you squeeze it and you apply some pressure to get what's out on the inside to see what's really on the inside. When the pressure came, we saw what was really on the inside. And I came to tell you on this morning, uh, pressure is on the way. Uh, if we vote like we voted in the past, uh, in November, there's going to be pressure. Uh, if we don't get out in the streets and share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, there will be pressure. When the pressure comes, uh, will you scatter like the disciples did? When the pressure comes, will you fall away? When the the pressure comes. Uh, will you forsake the Lord Jesus Christ? When uh, the pressure comes, will you deny Jesus uh, like Peter did? Can you handle the pressure when it comes? And the only way to handle the pressure is by learning how to pray. I want to make the argument, brothers and sisters, on this morning that instead of them sleeping, uh, they should have been watching Jesus. Uh, because in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus shows us how to pray when the pressure comes. Uh, for the text says a little earlier that he went a little further. Uh, and that's what it takes when the pressure of life comes. Uh, when everybody else is asleep. When everybody else uh, is uh, not alert or not awake. You've got to be willing uh, to go a little further. Anybody ever been there in the midnight hour? Everybody in the house was asleep. Uh, but you know uh, that you had to talk to God and you decided to go uh, a little further. Uh, not only do we have to learn how to go a little further, but sometimes... Uh, you can't stand up and pray sometimes. Uh, you can't just get down on your knees and pray. Uh, but you got to be like Jesus and fall flat on your face uh, and talk to the Father in heaven. Sometimes you got to go a little further. Sometimes you got to fall on your face. Uh, and then you got to tell God exactly what you want. Uh, Jesus said three times, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Uh, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You got to petition God. You've got to be passionate in your prayers. But then finally, you've got to be willing to submit to God. Because Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. And is there anybody in fellowship who would testify with me that prayer will change your situation? Prayer will change your circumstance. And if it don't change your situation, if it don't change your circumstance, it'll ease the storm that's on the inside of you. I just came to tell somebody you got to learn how to pray about it. Don't spend all your time worrying about it. Paul says worry about 
about nothing. Be anxious for nothing. He says, but in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Can I get about 40 folk in this place who will testify with me? You learn how to worry about nothing. You learn how to pray about everything. And you learn how to be thankful for all things. And God has given you peace. Not just any kind of peace, but God has given you peace that surpasses all understanding. If you learn how to pray, God can count on you. He says, be watchful. He says, be prayerful. But then I'm done on this morning. The Lord says, be spiritual. He says, watch and pray so you do not enter into temptation. Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus offers to us a contrast between the spirit and the flesh. He says that the spirit is willing. He says, but our flesh, it's weak. Our flesh is sick. Our flesh is diseased. I came to tell you on this morning, David got it right, y'all. When he said that we're born in sin and shapen in iniquity. I came to tell you, no matter how good we think we are. Brothers and sisters, we are naughty by nature. And because we're naughty by nature, we have to say like Paul said over there in Romans chapter 7, when I want to do good, evil is always present. Has anybody ever been there before? You want to do good, but it always seems you're doing the wrong thing. Is there anybody who would testify with me that when you take one step forward, sometimes in life it seems like you take two steps backwards. And you have to cry out like Paul, who can deliver me from this body of sin? Jesus said the flesh is, is weak. And we got to be mindful of that, brothers and sisters. Because so often we give in to our flesh. We give in to our flesh because we're not watching and we are not praying. And when we're not watching and when we're not praying, we will not operate in the spirit, but we will operate in the flesh. And when we operate in our flesh, we allow ourselves to be enticed by sin. That's why James said over there, in James 1, he said, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. He says, for God tempts no man. But James says that when we are tempted, he says we're drawn away by our own lust. He says we are pulled and dragged away by our own flesh our own desires and the problem is not only do we allow sin to entice us but when we do not watch and pray we allow sin to entrap us we become like monkeys in the wilderness yeah monkeys are hunted by hunters and they are easy prey for hunters because hunters know that monkeys by nature are greedy. Monkeys by nature only desire what they want when they want it. And therefore the hunter, he takes a coconut and he cuts a small hole in the coconut and he lets out the coconut juice and he replaces the coconut juice with small fruit because the monkey loves fruit. Uh, the monkey is greedy uh, and the hole is big enough uh, for the monkey's open hand to get into it uh, 
but it's small enough uh, so if he wraps his hand around the fruit uh, he can't get his fist out uh, and the monkey is so greedy uh, that he will not let go of the fruit uh, and he stays there for hours uh, he stays there for days uh, until the hunter shows up uh, and all he had to do uh, to save his life uh, was to let go of the fruit am i preaching to somebody on this morning uh, you've been enticed by sin uh, and you're entrapped by sin uh, all you have to do is let it go uh, and is there anybody here uh, who will testify with me that if you let it go God will, I said God will, set you free. Is there anybody here who's free on this morning uh, who will testify with me? Uh, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus said the Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak you got an old nature you got an old man but i'm so glad that's not the only man living on the inside of us is there anybody glad that we got a new man we got a new nature we got a new spirit therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Is there anybody who will testify? You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't walk like you used to walk. You don't go where you used to go. There's someone, there's something on the inside working on the outside oh what a change has come over me Jesus said father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done he went back to the fellas he said y'all to sleep later because my hour has come. Here comes Judas, uh, who betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. He said, the one I kiss, uh, he is the one. Uh, they seize Jesus. Uh, they march my Jesus uh, from judgment hall uh, to judgment hall. Uh, they took him before Pilate. Uh, they took him before Herod. Uh, they took him through a kangaroo court. Uh, uh, it was the tradition to release one of the prisoners. Uh, he piloted, uh, could find no fault in Jesus. Uh, and he wanted to release Jesus. Uh, but they said, release Barabbas. Uh, but with this Jesus, uh, crucify him. Uh, crucify him. Uh, and is there anybody here? Uh, who's glad on this morning uh, that they released Barabbas uh, and they crucified Jesus uh, because Barabbas uh, couldn't die for our sins. Uh, Barabbas couldn't redeem us. Uh, Barabbas couldn't justify us. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, they crucified Jesus. Uh, they marched him out there to Golgotha. Uh, they marched him out there uh, to Calvary's Hill. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who's glad on this morning? Uh, they put nails in his hands and they put spikes in his feet uh, and they hung him down between two thieves, uh, between heaven and earth. Uh, and he died. He died. Is there anybody in fellowship? Uh, on this morning who's glad that Jesus died he died for your sins he died for my sins but I'm so glad that he didn't stay dead 
Can I get about 50 folk <laughs> glad on this morning <laughs> that Jesus didn't stay dead? Early, 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 early. Sunday morning, Jesus got up. If you know he lives, say yeah, 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 because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all my fears are gone, because he lives, life is worth the living. Because he lives, if you know he lives, you ought to just grab your neighbor and tell your neighbor he lives. He lives, he lives. Tell your neighbor, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I've got joy, joy. I dare to call his name Jesus 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 Jesus, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall there hear thereof and be glad. Don't y'all make me praise him by myself. Oh, magnify. the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together Jesus 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 Extend the invitation to somebody to come and be saved. You heard the preacher say he died. He did not die for himself. He died for you and for me. The question is, can you accept that and be saved? When I think about that, I think about my own unworthiness. And all the Bible says, scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet he died for a sinner like me. He died for sinners like us. No matter what you've done, he died for you. No matter how strangely people look at you, he died for you. No matter how people refuse you, if you come to him in faith, 
he will accept you. And here's, if I can use the language of yesteryear, here's the beauty part about it. You can be as low down as you want to be. If you come to him in faith, he'll accept you. Will you come on now? Count on me. Count on me for loving, hearted, service, glad and free. and God bless the messenger the entire message turned on this axis he, we can count on him to come to our rescue can he count on us 
to do his will and do his service. God bless you, Pastor White. May the Lord keep you for that challenging message on this morning. Amen. It's been a while since I've heard you. Look, look like you got a new little tune there, too. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with gravy that's made by the meat. And there's plenty of meat in that message. Amen. God bless you. We're going to worship the Lord in giving now as the deacons come to the tables. Anyone needing an offering envelope, kindly raise your hand now that the ushers may see you and serve you. Simple Sunday school song, Count On Me. Didn't our children do well this morning? Amen. God bless you, Sister Samuel. And God bless all the youth counselors, all the parents and guardians, and not just the parents and guardians, the mamas and the papas too. see the fruit of their labors on these Saturdays that they spend here at the church. And thank God again for these counselors and parents who spend time with them. Amen. I'm here, you feel like one of them, you're sitting out there with them. Thank God for feeling. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and for this another worship experience. We're thankful for these thy people. And we are thankful once again for all of the substance of life with which thou has so graciously blessed us. Lord, now, as we return a portion of it unto thee, Help us, dear Lord, to do it with grateful spirits, with cheerful spirits, with loving spirits. Bless those who have, bless those who don't have. Bless them for their good desire. Bless that which we offer unto you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Those in the center section, please stand, turn to your right, and come from the rear. To the center table. In this section, would you please stand? Turn to your left. Again, coming from the rear. This section, please stand. Turn to your right. Again, coming from the rear.
most heavenly righteous father we come right now and say thank you thank you for your many manifold blessings that you've placed upon and watching over we ask that you bless those that gave and bless those that wanted to give and didn't have father but you know all things father you know what we stand in need of these blessing all blessing i ask in your mighty son jesus name amen thank you lord everybody that um, again that the banquet is God's Army of Men Men's Day Banquet is the 13th second Saturday in April Men's Day is on the 14th the second Sunday in April and I want to let everybody know um, if Deacon Wheeler Deacon Bird Brother Harrington and myself have the tickets and they are available please see us get your tickets come out and have a good time with us thank you good morning fellowship i came on this morning to say thank you because i had an idea of what i wanted to do when I saw a gentleman in Jackson Square drawing pictures, and you made it all possible. And thank you so much for giving. And you gave, you overgave, you overdid. And so we want to recognize a couple of our uh, willing workers, I'll call them. Sister Shante, would you come please? This is just a token. We're not trying to buy you or pay you, but just a token to tell you that we love you and thank you so much for working with the children like you do. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Lampkin, we want to say thank you to you also. Once again, thank each and every one of you. My cousin back in the corner who dug deep, Brother Sproul who dug deep, and just thank you, because we had a great time. We had an overflow of more than 50 children on yesterday. And thank you parents for bringing them on and being and working with us. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Pastor. Tired, I, I can't hardly make it. That's all right. They wore me out yesterday. It's all right. It's all right. Good morning. Good morning. I come to you on behalf of the Gordon Duncan Educational Fund. We are in, time is passing, and we wanted to start early, but, you know, things are happening, and always it's near an annual time for us to recognize our students and our children in the church. Um, please make any yearly contributions. We need your help. We have to reach a goal, the $100 circle. If you cannot participate in the $100 circle, you can participate any way possible that you can. It does not have to be $100, but we are hoping that it can be $100. Uh, we will continue giving memorials if you would like to on recognizing someone who has passed in your lifetime. It does not have to be a member of the church. Memorial is a memorial. Um, the membership supports the Darton Duncan Educational Fund, which helps students, high school seniors, 
those who have achieved their higher educational goals, you can give your contributions in two ways. We have a green envelope that we are, that you can put your contribution in. You can get that from the usher. Also, you can use your white envelope, but make sure, make sure that you put it by Gordon Duncan Educational Fund line. I mean, you can circle it also to make sure that they notice that that's what that's for. You do not have, like I said, you do not have to give it all at one time. You can give it in parts. Um, also, next, starting next month, we are going to recognize our birthdays again. We move kind of slow with it this time because so much has been going on in my life. So uh, we'll start again next month. And if you would like to, for your birthday, you can put a little small contribution in the envelope, recognizing that it's your birthday to the church. Or are we going to still have the celebrations, but we're going to do it a little bit different this month. So next week, next month, I'll come back to you and explain to you how we're going to do it a little bit different. Thank you. Amen. Um, one of our members who now resides in Houston, Texas, um, post Katrina and post pandemic, Sister Iris Manny had a fall the other day and fractured her pelvis. So uh, let's include Sister Manny in our prayers. As we, as we pray. Some of us remember how she used to sit over in this section. Let's remember her. Uh, I thought I saw Brother Michael coming. Yes, there he is. He's been hospitalized and we didn't know it. Uh, but I'm glad to see him in service on this morning, uh, Brother Cummings. And um, let us not forget Friday, Good Friday service at noon, one hour, around the corner at Greater Pleasant Green. Just be one hour on Friday. Next Sunday, our regular order of worship uh, at 7.30 Sunday morning. All right? Am I forgetting anything or anybody? Good morning, fellowship. Just a couple of announcements. For the mass choir, you will have choir rehearsal on tomorrow at 7 p.m. here at the church for all the choir members. Uh, soul winners class. It'll immediately follow, follow soul winners class. So we will have soul winners class tomorrow as well. Bible study this Wednesday, uh, 1145, we'll be here at the church. And on behalf of the youth department, I just want to thank everybody again who came out on yesterday. Parents, godparents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, we appreciate you. Thank you for getting the children here. Counselors, young and old, thank you for being on your post yesterday. I appreciate all the help. And uh, as Reverend Hilliard said, we had about 50 kids here yesterday. And it was really a blessing to watch them really pay attention and learn about the resurrection on yesterday. And it was a blessed time. It was a very blessed time. So thank you for all your contributions, all the candy, all the money you put in my hand. It all went to good use, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you, Sister Samuel, for your wonderful efforts on the part of our young people. How do you know when you're getting older? There's so many different ways. I, I lost a good friend this week, uh, one of my classmates in high school. He's been here several times. He's been on program here. Brother Royal also know uh, he passed on Friday. And um, so we ask you to pray for his wife and for the rest of his family. He was like a brother, and you don't find many of those in the world. Um, Visitors, we have any visitors here before we dismiss? Visitors, would you please stand? Visitors, any visitors in the house? Oh, oh, oh Brother Robbins, glad, glad to see Brother Robbins. He's not, he's not a visitor, but you know what? He lives, what, on Prairieville now? In Prairieville? Yeah, 
You live out in Prairie Village, Sister Morris, out in your neck of the woods. Uh, remain standing, Brother Robert. We're going to sing this for you. Welcome to the ship. Fellowship. Welcome to the ship. Fellowship. You don't have to be born in. You can just join in the ship. Fellowship. Fellowship. God bless you, Brother Robbins. Amen. And uh, my secretary, she's getting back on the good foot. She's in the office a few hours each day. She's getting together. Uh, my granddaughter said, let me show you how T. Lydia does in church. Ah! <laughs> Let's stand to be dismissed. Without a friend, not even my kin, they close to sin. I can never win. No one drop. Life became too much. I began to lose everything I touched, and I can't tell you love. It brought me back. Promise and love, and it brought me back. May the love of God, grace, mercy, and peace of our once crucified, buried, risen, and ascended Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all now and forever. Amen. God bless you.